Hey guys, so this is a video on how to use the ATEM Television Studio HD Switcher um, and its complementary software called the ATEM Software Control. So let's get started. ATEM Television Studio HD Switcher gives us the ability to stream video to social media during your radio show by using any of the three in-studio cameras or by using your computer. Um, it allows us to easily broadcast and switch between studio cameras and other inputs, save individual user profile settings for an easy transition when changing between shows, uh, it includes uh, visually pleasing transitions between broadcast sources, and you can add up to 20 visual stills to the media bank to use in your show. There are two different types of ways to change your visuals. So there's the physical switcher itself and the switcher software. So both methods are pretty similar with the same capabilities, but there are a few subtle differences. So due to its small portable size, the switcher has fewer buttons, but works in the same way, using the same colors and logistical themes as the switcher software. The settings on the switcher software are a lot easier to change, however, than on the uh, switcher itself. And the Switcher software allows for a lot more customization for more advanced transitions and techniques, though this should not be an issue at the basic level. Um, media can only be set on the Switcher software, so keep that in mind. The first thing you want to do is open the Switcher software. So to do that, you're going to log on to the computer. You're going to uh, click on the Windows icon at the bottom left. You're going to go to the B Black Magic Design folder, and there you're going to see the ATEM software control um, icon. So you're going to double click on that, and the switcher software will open. So this is the main tab that you're going to see, and the, there's different tabs. So you're going to see a switcher tab, a media tab, which I'm going to explain later, an audio tab, which is pretty simple. It just shows you the audio. So all the audio is coming from the radio board, so you don't have to worry about that and then a cameras tab that isn't very um, useful for us. The switcher software allows users to save their personal settings or media stills for easy access the next time you log in, but you're also able to restore the software to its default settings. So to do that, you're going to go into File, Restore, and it's going to open a window and you're going to want to go to Default ATEM Software Settings. You're going to open that. And there's going to be a, a new window which, with a bunch of check marks. That's fine. It's everything's set. And you're going to press restore. And everything's going to be back to normal. So everything's going to be back to um, a default uh, state, which is perfect for when you start your show. So another thing you can do is create a user profile to save your settings and media stills to the switcher software. So that's really great when, let's say, you have a show once a week and you always have stills that you want to keep um, on the software. So what you're going to do for that is going to go into File, Save As, and you're going to put whatever your show is called or however you want to call it. So mine's going to be called uh, Ruth's Corner. So if I Ruth's Corner, there we go. And then I'm going to press Save. And then these um, check marks are going to be up there again. Um, don't worry about those. Those just mean that these are the things that you're saving and you're going to press save. So now when you go back um, into your show or when you come back next week, you're going to go to file, restore, and see I have Ruth's corner over here. I'm going to have all my stills and all my settings. I'm going to open that, restore, and there you go. The ATEM console allows you to project your personal computer screen as an additional input to include into your show. So to do this, you're going to plug in your own computer or laptop with the HDMI cord that is right beside the switcher. And then your computer will now be available to use and to project by pressing the camera one button. If your computer does not show up on the cam one input, check your display preferences on your computer. Using the switcher's menu is pretty easy. All you have to do is press menu and then use the knob to go through the different menu options. Once you have one that you want to use, you press set. And from there, you can scroll once again and click on set to select it again. Once you are done, all you have to do is press menu 
about two times to get back to the main screen. To move or rotate cameras, untighten the knob under the camera and position it to the desired angle. Do not forget to retighten the knob when finished. Be careful, the cameras can get very hot. To remove unwanted text from the camera feed, use the joystick at the back of the camera. Move the joystick to position 3 or down until you get to the exit option. Once on the exit option, press the joystick down to position 1 as though you're pushing a button. You might also want to reset the cameras to a default setting. This must be done on each camera individually while input is selected on the switcher. So to do that, press the joystick down to position 1. Move the joystick to position 3 until you get to the reset option. Once on the reset option, press down the joystick to position 1. Move the joystick to exit option and then press the joystick down to position 1. The multi-view monitor allows us to see all eight video sources at the same time. It also has two larger boxes at the bottom indicating the preview and the program sources. This is mostly what you're going to use when you're looking to use transitions due to the ease of seeing the preview and the program that is on air. Just to give you guys a little tour of the software, here we have the program bus, the preview bus, the next transitions, the transition style, uh, downstream key 1 and 2, and the fade to black. So first we'll go through the buttons. So the program and the preview have the exact same buttons. Um, the program just does it on air live, whereas the preview allows you to do transitions to cut from one input to the other. So for program one, camera one is the computer HDMI. Camera two, three, four, and five currently have nothing on them. Camera six is the camera nearest the DJ booth. Camera 7 is the interviewer camera, so it faces um, either towards you or towards the green room. And camera 8 is the one nearest the radio switcher. So you have a black button, which allows you to, sh to show nothing, just a black screen. You have bars, which is normally used as a technical difficulties. You have color 1, which is the color that you can set. And if you press shift and color one, you have color two, which is another color you can easily set. And then you have MP1, which is your media player one, and MP2, which is your media player two. Then you have your cut and your auto buttons. So cut is to do an instantaneous cut, whereas auto is to do a transition. The buttons on the switcher itself are also very similar to the switcher software. So you have the camera 1 to 8 buttons. You have the MP1 and the MP2 button. And you have the cut, the auto, and the fade to black button. The other sources cannot be found directly on the face of the ATEM. Those will be found in the menu options. So there are multiple ways to switch video on the switcher software. The first way, you're going to use the program section and go quickly between camera 1, camera 6, camera 7, camera 8, or any other input. Another way is to do it with more transitions is by using the preview. Press one of the buttons on the preview that has an input and it's going to turn green. Once it's green, you're going to either press cut for an instantaneous cut or auto. One of the great things about this monitor, multi-view monitor, is that you can see which is your preview and which is your program. Now to change between cameras or other inputs on the switcher, all you have to do is press the desired button on the switcher. This button will automatically turn red, meaning it is currently live. You can select other sources in the switcher that are not on the front panel of the LCD menu, such as black, color 1, color 2, bars, etc. So to get to that, you're going to press menu. You're going to turn the knob to program or preview, depending on which one you want to do. Let's go to program. You're going to press set. And now you have a plethora of other sources you can use, such as 
color bars, color one, color two. You can set your media players from here. You can set your black. So I'm gonna choose color bars. So from there, I can press set to choose the source. And now the program, if I go back to menu, is my sources. You'll see that no other buttons are currently red. That's because it is using the internal source from the switcher. Now, if you wanna go back to a source, don't worry. You just have to press the button and it'll go back to the red. As I mentioned before, there are four different types of transitions. There's a mixed transition, which is a gradual transition from one source to another. So as you can see here, it's very gradual. There's the dip, which is similar to a mix, but it has a middle, a middle kind of source between both. So in this case, our dip source is the bars. So you go from one to the other. There's a wipe, which is a transition from one source to another that is achieved by replacing the current source by another source with a pattern or a shape. So that one's kind of cool when you um, set it. So you can have very different shapes. This is a circle right here. Okay. And there's a DVE. So this transition displaces the image in various ways to, to transition from one picture to another. So it could be like a sideways swipe. It could be... Uh, like it's basically pushing the image. So as you can see here, mine is actually going to the right. So the way to change these transitions, I kind of showed you already, but what you wanna do is click on the one you want and it'll turn yellow. So when it's yellow, it means that that's the one you are currently selected on. And then when you press auto, it'll go to the rate that's right here that you want it to go. So let's say I want it to be a two second, um, mix I put two seconds here and now you'll see that it's a lot slower than it was before so it's up to you to really um, decide what rate you want it at and as you see um, there's this manual bar that moves up and down when you complete that auto the other way to change transition on the switcher is to press the menu button you want to scroll the wheel all the way to transitions from there you're gonna press set and then here the transition is set to mix. If I want to change it, I just press set again and I can change it um, to mix, dip, wipe, or DVE. So let's say I want to do a dip. I press set and then I press menu to go back to before. And now we have all of the settings uh, for the DVE over here. If I want to press a setting, I just press set, but I'm pretty good with that rate. And then from there, I just go menu again and then menu once more. One of the things I would like to mention though is that you can't currently do any transitions on the switcher itself, but you have to go rather in the switcher software. Fading to black is mostly used at the start of your production or at the end of your production. So that ensures that all the layers of the switcher are faded down together. So one of the ways you can do that is on the switcher software. So what you do is you press the FTB button in the corner here and it will turn off your visuals at the current rate that you want it. It'll stay flashing until you press it again and that's gonna fade back to the video. All you have to do to fade to black on the switcher is press the FTB button. Once the FTB button is pressed, it'll start blinking and like the switcher software, you just have to press it again for it to fade back to the video. Loading media stills is a great way to customize your show and have your own graphics to show to your audience. So the way you're gonna do that is go into media and you'll see that there is 20 different slots that you can put your stills into. So what you're gonna do, I have a bridge still that I wanna include into my uh, show. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna drag it into the second slot. Now you'll see that there's no, not, not only a little thumbnail of the image, but also the name and the little number. So now I'm going to assign the two MP1 and MP2 buttons um, to those stills. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into media players and then I'm going to press media players again. And then MP1 has the first still over here and then my MP2 is the one that I want to have my bridge. So as you see, you can, when you click that drop down, it'll drop down to 20 stills. I'm gonna press on the bridge one. And now when I switch to MP2, you'll see that it is my bridge photo. So this is great if you have multiple um, 
pictures because you can actually um, show your pictures um, but load them in all at once and then you can just quickly change to whichever still you want. One of the tricky things though is that you want to make sure that when you are loading stills, so see how the two is circled, that means it's currently on air. So if you want to take off a still, it, it cannot be on air and it cannot be on a preview. So there cannot be a little red nor a green circle because that means um, it's being used by the switcher currently. So let's say I want to take off my bridge photo. I just press X and it is no longer there. As I mentioned before, if you want to create a user profile so that all of your stills are there every time you log on, you can go visit the beginning of the video. Going live on social media is fairly easy. All you have to do is pick your social media source. So let's go with Skype first. Go to your contact and press the video button. Once you do that, the computer will simply take the external source which is the ATEM and will diffuse the camera sources. If you want to do Facebook all you have to do is sign in onto your Facebook so I have it right here and you want to go into live video. Once you click live video once again the computer will recognize your three cameras as the main source and you'll be live with the possibility of using the ATEM switcher. In terms of YouTube sign in onto your YouTube and you're going to go right in the top right corner and go to this plus camera button. Once you do that, you go into the live and again, the computer will respond to your external source, which is the three cameras and the other import sources that you put into the ATEM.